Good evening and welcome to the finale of the 2024 Fort Worth Business Plan Competition at the Modern Art Museum. I am Fort Worth Mayor Maddie Parker. The competition is now in its 13th year. A huge thank you to our long-standing sponsors at Frost Bank for their support and collaboration to make this possible. Wallet Hub recently ranked Fort Worth as the top large city in Texas to start a business. The supportive community of business owners, partner organizations, and ecosystem builders in this room have helped make this possible. Congratulations to the businesses who are pitching tonight. You've each put a lot of work into your business plan and into your presentation. Whether you win one of the top prizes or not, we hope this competition has helped prepare you and your business for long-term success in our city and connected you with a support network to help guide you along your entrepreneurial journey. Good luck to the top eight. Let's get on with the show. Welcome to the 2024 Fort Worth Business Plan Competition. My name is Dexter Sykes. I am the Small Business Specialist for the Fort Worth Economic Development Department. And we are very excited to have you join us today. Tonight, we'll be awarding $20,000 to three businesses before the event is through. And to help get things kicked off, I would like to invite my boss, Robert Stearns, the Economic Development Director for the City of Fort Worth to come up and say a few things. Robert. Thank you, Dexter, I appreciate that. And thank you all for coming out tonight. It's hard to believe this is the 13th year we've been doing this event. Um, Thank you to Frost Bank for, for all of your support over the past few years in, in doing this competition. Uh, and before I kind of jump into my comments, I do want to recognize that tonight we do have Councilmember Jeanette Martinez from Council District 11. Uh, Councilmember, you can right, So I can't think of a better time to have this competition than Economic Development Week. How many people know it's Economic Development Week? All right, we do. We, we like it. Really, when you think about economic development, I mean, that is what's really driving uh, the growth in Fort Worth, and small businesses are a key part to that. So the SBA typically defines small businesses as 500 employees or less, but 80% of small businesses actually have fewer than 20 employees. And in Tarrant County, our small businesses account for 355,000 jobs. Think about that, 355,000. That is the backbone of our community. And so when you talk about economic development and why supporting small businesses are vitally important to the strength of this community, those types of numbers are what we're talking about. So I'm proud to be a part of this competition. I've said it every year. This is my favorite thing that I get to do. So I'm glad that the rain held off and uh, we're looking forward to an exciting night tonight. And with that, I will turn it back over to Dexter and we will get this show kicked off. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Robert. And as many of you know, our, this event happens because of the cooperation of many of our ecosystem partners. And chief among them is Frost Bank, who partners with us on this event. So I would like to call Hadley Warner up to say a few words. Hadley is the regional president of Frost Bank. Hadley. Thank you, Dexter, and thank each and every one of you for being here to support this uh, evening celebrating small business here in Fort Worth. Uh, an incredible, incredible opportunity to showcase what makes this city so great, and that is the entrepreneurship and great ideas that come forth every year to keep growing and building the ecosystem within um, this great city. We're proud to be, Frost is proud to be the presenting sponsor again this year. We've been the presenting sponsor since 2018, and we're excited to announce this evening that uh, we are offering pre-approved $5,000 lines of credit and a $200 Frost Visa gift card to every participant in this year's competition who completed, <laughs> who completed the program and is in the program for the first time. So. Congratulations to all of you who completed this. Uh, a special congratulations to the top eight. And uh, we will be in contact with all the participants uh, uh, of the entire program and follow up with you on that offer. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you. 
That is fantastic. But wait, there's more. Uh, in our audience tonight, we have our winner from last year's competition with us. Would you please help me welcome Shalana to Burnside. I didn't know you had a fan club. A little pop gourmet popcorn. Good evening, everyone. So I remember this time last year vividly. As my husband and I sat right there on the fourth row, I squeezed his hand tightly in anticipation for our time to pitch. We believed 100% in our business, Lil Pop, and we have worked tirelessly on our business plan. This competition was our moment to showcase our passion and hard work. Before this competition, I was a wife, a mom, a woman with a dream. My passion was to share different flavors of my gourmet popcorn with the world and also inspire my daughters to pursue entrepreneurship. As you all can relate, being an entrepreneur is not easy, but through the highs and lows, I held onto that dream tightly, knowing that every challenge was just another opportunity to turn into a reality. Pitching at last year's competition changed everything. It was our chance to shine, to articulate the ideas that constantly race through our minds. We showcased our brand and convinced the judges of its potential. This competition was a platform to demonstrate what we already knew and believed, that we had something special with Lil Pop. Winning last year was a milestone, but it was just the beginning. It showed me the potential of my vision, the power of perseverance, and how to think bigger. What started as a concept for customizing popcorn flavors online blossomed into something more engaging our popcorn bar experience that we bring directly to our customers. Whether it's a corporate gathering, a wedding reception, or any occasion in need of a touch of fun, we're there to elevate the atmosphere with a variety of our sweet and savory flavors. So, finalists, you're here. Your business plan is complete, your pitch deck has been submitted, and you've practiced this pitch so much, everyone in your house can probably recite it. <laughs> now is game time. Just know that even if you don't walk away in first place today, you have accomplished so much thus far. You have a business plan and a pitch deck that you can be proud of. My advice would be to continue to cultivate the relationships that you created in this program with other fellow entrepreneurs and glean from the many resources that this beautiful city of Fort Worth offers. This competition is just one step in your entrepreneurial journey, and every step forward is a victory in itself. Embrace the experience, learn from it, and let it fuel your future success. Godspeed. Is Michael here? Michael, will you wave? Let to see the fam there. Thank you very much for coming. Really do appreciate you having you guys here. And now to take you the rest of the way, I would like to bring up our MC, who uh, also is a business plan winner, the 2022 Fort Worth Business Plan Competition winner, uh, Lauren Kuchka from Salted Pages, who will finish this off and take you the rest of the way. <laughs> Hi, good evening, and Dexter, thank you for the beautiful introduction. I met Dexter last year, and it's been super rewarding to be at the receiving end yet again of his wit and wisdom. Just stand next to him, you will laugh, I can promise. Um, by the way, we did find a cell phone, and so during intermission, if that's your cell phone that might be missing, you can just head over to the Frost table where you collected your name tag. So, let's go ahead and begin, shall we? Again, congratulations to our contestants. Like Dexter said, I was one of those contestants back in 2022. I'm Lauren, by the way. I'm a dog person. I'm the founder of Salted Pages, a marketing agency that helps companies make waves with brand messaging and search engine optimization, usually in the form of website copy. I help entrepreneurs refine their stories in their websites, and tonight we will get to hear quite a few of those stories and fund some of them because we have $20,000 cash on the line. Let's give a round of applause for that, please. Well, similar to Lil Pop Popcorn, I remember the day that I won. 
I had just barely refined my pitch that day. And so I showed up and I just was thinking about my house at home and just the scattered pieces of paperwork everywhere with my written business plan that had taken over and my poor husband who had to sit with me during multiple editing and brainstorming sessions that I'm sure many of you can relate to. Because the tricky thing is with this contest, Business doesn't stop. You have to write this plan, work on your pitch while there are customers to serve, clients to communicate with, services to provide, products to sell, a life to live. This competition for me was pivotal. It took me from solopreneur to a team of three, a team that is running my business for me this entire month while I take it off to travel and because I love entrepreneurship to be here with you. But another key piece of this competition is the mentorship. So I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the mentors and organizations who have guided our entrepreneurs on this journey. So if you are one of these that I call, please stand. We have the Director for Economic Opportunity at the Center for Transforming Lives, Jenna Babbitt, please stand. <laughs> then we have the Executive Vice President of Frost Bank, Nikita Dennis. <laughs> and the VP Business Development Officer, DFW at Lyft Fund, Erica Hirsch. And the owner of Cherry Coffee and Novel Coffee Roasters, Catherine Morris. And of course, the founder and CEO of Trin Consulting Group, Kathy Trin. And last but not least, the owner of Dig Contracting, President Community Frontline of Fort Worth, Dante Williams. Now these are our judges who are going to make a really big difference tonight, but we also have a lot of other organizations that have helped out, so I would like those in these organizations to also stand. We have Accelerate Fort Worth. If you're here, there we go. <laughs> and then we have HSC next. If you're here, please stand. Foundations, EDC, please stand. Score, Fort Worth. Also the Tarrant SDBC, if you could please stand. And then last but not least, we have Tech Fort Worth. And lastly, we have this beautiful setting, a museum of all places, and one that you should certainly return to visit after today. Thank you to the Modern and perhaps your next brunch location, Cafe Modern. Another round of applause, please. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the format for tonight's pitches. I would like to first talk about the point of this competition, to create a winning business plan. Every single one of these participants from day one deserves appreciation and recognition for the work put in. If you were one of those top 20, could you please stand so that we can give you a warm round of applause. Thank you so much and thank you for those who are here to support them. Each of them has a business plan now, and outside of today's winnings, it's the steps in these plans that you will follow to create profits, results, and purpose. So let's get on to the fun part, the pitches. I'll walk you through how that works, and then we'll send them backstage and begin it all. So tonight, we've narrowed down those 20 to the top eight. They're here to pitch their panels to the judges that I introduced, and we have some cash prizes. So that third prize winner, they will go home with $4,000 in cash. Let's give them a round of applause for that. And then, of course, we have the second prize winner at $6,000. And that first place cash prize, a big old check for $10,000. Okay, so the judges have already reviewed those written plans. That was 50% of the score. That's done, signed, sealed, delivered. The other 50% is tonight, the pitch that you will be hearing and seeing. So each contestant will have three minutes to make that pitch, followed by two minutes of Q&A with our judges. After all the pitches are done, the judges will deliberate, we'll take a little break, get some tasty snacks out there, and then we'll return to announce the winners. 
But in addition to those cash prizes, you as the audience will also get to vote on your favorite, who will win a $500 credit from printed threads. So just kind of keep in mind who you are enjoying, and at the end, we will open the survey and share those details. You can also find them in your program so we can vote for that winner. So we're gonna go ahead and kick things off with alphabetical order, so if all of our contestants, except for the first, which is brown sugar ice cream, to go ahead backstage. So this is the part where the adrenaline really kicks in for them. So I'm going to ask that you make each one of them feel welcome, feel heard, nodding heads, smiles, laughter, just no distractions. And I promise back there is one of the hardest parts of the entire night to sit and wait for your turn. So first up, we have a brand that adds flavor while bringing diversity and according to their Instagram, vibes. So please bring up our first pitch contestant, Brown Sugar Ice Cream Company. Do y'all know anyone who suffers after eating ice cream? No? Don't look around, it's probably you. Actually, 76% of people are lactose intolerant, including myself. But why me? Why ice cream? It actually starts with a tradition. It was a custom for me and my daughter to travel across town to the closest specialty ice cream shop to celebrate a good week at school. After getting her ice cream fixed that day, she asked me a simple question. Mom, why don't we go to an ice cream shop in our neighborhood? But that uncovered three major concerns. The first being that there was no boutique ice cream shop in our Southeast Fort Worth neighborhood. The second being that lactose-free ice cream options were few and far between, or just not that good. And the third, we love supporting small black-owned businesses, but we didn't have an option. So what was the solution? I'm DJ, and I am the proud owner of Brown Sugar Ice Cream Company. I love my job, guys. I get to make ice cream but it's also my mission to bring an inclusive, lactose-free ice cream experience to underrepresented areas in Fort Worth and beyond. We've been churning since 2022 and don't plan on stopping anytime soon. We've curated seven goody but classic flavors, including peaches and cream, roasted strawberry, and brown butter pecan, just to name a few. We pride ourselves on our partnerships with local minority farmers to bring us the freshest farm-to-table ingredients. Take, for instance, my friend Lucky up here, and he's out in Carthage, Texas, where we receive all of our organic cage-free eggs from him, and the Williams family up top, where we get the freshest strawberries and juiciest peaches. Even Kennedale for our pecans, Terrell for our dairy and cream, and my own kitchen for homemade churned butter. But think about where you can go to smell waffle cones being made right now, or get a fresh scoop of ice cream made earlier that day. You just can't in my neighborhood. So trends are showing that artisanal ice cream demand is on the rise. Competitors like Melton Morgan just left out East Fort Worth, Kennedale, Everman, Mansfield, and even West Arlington. To date, Brown Sugar offers single serve cups and pints for customers to buy at local pop-up events, farmers markets, and private celebrations. Now, business financials are a major opportunity for us in 2024. Projections currently have us at 85% profit margin, which is pretty impressive. However, as we expand our workforce, ramp up production, and invest in custom packaging, we aim to stabilize between 65 and 70% in the subsequent years. But imagine the solid growth that we would see if we incorporated a luxury ice cream cart. With our current executive team in place, Brown Sugar can confidently take on future endeavors. I'd like to take a second just to thank the city of Fort Worth and Frost Bank, but most importantly, my daughter Jordan, for this amazing experience and journey. Thank you. Now we'll go ahead and Q &A. Go Q and a Here we go. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Have you thought about incorporating non-lactose intolerant flavors of ice cream to give you that extra oomph to, you know, just go above and beyond? Um, no, to be honest, uh, there is a targeted demographic that I am specifically after, and that's 76% of actually people of color who are lactose intolerant. Now, all of our flavors still incorporate dairy, so you get to enjoy the creamy and richness of regular ice cream, except without the, the painful, uh, 
lactose intolerance. I love your business uh, idea, and I would love to try your ice cream one day. So quick yes. question. Mm -hmm. I know right now you are the servant within the geographic area, but have you ever think about manufacturing and expand beyond Texas? Absolutely. That would be in future plans. For now, because we're trying to build brand loyalty and just recognition, um, we want to stay local as well as some of the surrounding areas. You mentioned that your financials were a space of opportunity. You want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, for this business plan, it was a bit of a struggle for me, uh, along with probably the rest of us, to, to come up with financials for year one through three. I do have a CPA that is on our executive board now to help out with that and alleviate some of that stress for me. Hey, good. Can you hear me now? There we go. All right. Excellent job. Um, Thank you. Great job, great product. Can you speak to how, um, how you've actually dealt with the southeast side of Fort Worth and what's been kind of the take of that market and kind of how you produce your product? Yeah, even with the southeast market, there are specific flavors that do better than others. Um, I also try to partner with local people for pop-up events. Um, I think the main challenge would just be to get brand loyalty out there as well as just understand that it's Southeast Fort Worth, it comes with its own challenges. Thank you so much, that's our time. Thank you. I feel like she was saying all of the right words. I know um, during my time I would say things like scrumptious and people ate it up. So now to have such an exclusive artisanal experience, oh, I love it. So, speaking of delights in life, one of those is getting your hair done. And for our next contestant, hair, is her canvas. So let's go ahead and bring up Khmer. Please, round of applause. I am excited to announce the future is here at Khmer Hair Salon. It is 2024 and we now have extensions to match the future thoughts. Hi, I'm Camelia Smith. I am the owner of Camara LLC. I've been in business for almost 20 years now, and the, the business I'm adding to my business is called Slice Strands. I am the first certified in the DFW area and the only one in Fort Worth. Ladies, wouldn't this be nice? Put on my morning mask. I'll be right there, George. <laughs> Have something better. The old ways of doing things versus slice strands. Slice strands only take 30 minutes for hair installations versus the old ways. Slice strands only um, has 2% of hair loss and damage versus the old ways. Slice strands is a patent pending installation method that actually hide the bees versus the OAs. Slice strands is the Ferrari of extensions. It, it brings quality, speed, and luxury. With slice strands, I will add within the next year, conservatively take my business from 50,000 to 150,000. With this, I will be able to service five extension clients per day versus the two maximum. Each client will bring in a recurring revenue of $300 every six to eight weeks. With a client come in, we would do a consultation. We would choose color, lengths, and their payment plans. The lengths ranges from 20 to 24. It's ponytail approved and it's completely customizable. Here are some of the sizes of slice strands. The client would also fill out a consultation form. Do they want their hair long and sleek or voluminous and bouncy? Here are some before and afters. Here's this before and check out her after. Voila. This was presented to you by Khmer, 
If you would like more info or book your own consultation, you can scan the QR code. Thank you for your time and follow us on social media. Fantastic job. So what is the difference in pricing between the traditional hair extensions and what is your price point? So my price range is mid-range. Um, it's our average price for installation is fifteen hundred to two thousand. With compared to others, others range you have all the way from maybe five hundred to all the way up to five thousand dollars. Great presentation. I can tell you, you spent a lot of time on it. Uh, could you explain a little bit in more detail about Slice Strands? Are they a different company that you pay royalties for? Kind of, what's that set up? So how it's set up currently is that I went and got certified, and um, I, after I received my certification, I can buy extensions, install extensions. I went to the class, so I pay no royalties or anything like that. So it seems like you have an amazing product. Have you ever thought about hiring all the hairdressers to do what you do so that you can work on the business, you can manage them instead of working in the business? Yes, yes, yes. So um, in, within the next six months, I plan to hire an assistant stylist and also hire um, someone to help manage the behind the scenes so that I can continue to educate other stylists to do this as well. You talked about being the only consultant, I guess, in North Texas? Um, I'm the first certified in DFW area. So yes, North Texas. Okay, so is that specifically for the brand or is it for this installation type? For this brand, the brand is included with the installation type. So it's currently patent pending. So hopefully they'll have that patent very soon. So would bring it on an assistant, would she need to be certified as well or does your certification cover her? My certification will actually cover her and if she wanted to buy or something, she would have to go get certified, but right now my certification will cover her. All right, that's our time. All right, thank Great. you. I know a lot of us can relate to the time spent styling, fixing, coloring our hair, and she just gave us a lot of time back, but with hair that is just as beautiful. So speaking of beautiful things, summer is just around the corner, right when you remember about your New Year's resolution to get in shape, which this next pitch is going to inspire us all to do. So please welcome Champion Strength and Conditioning. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dee Henry, and I am the founder, owner, and one of the personal trainers at Champion Strength and Conditioning. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to share with you my company, so let's get started. So I have a question for everyone here today. By a show of hands, how many of you have had a gym membership in the past or currently have one? Well, we are not that. We are actually the exact opposite of that. We are a one-on-one -on -one private personal training studio and we specialize in getting our clients transformative results, results that they can not only feel, but results that they can see. This journey actually started for me <laughs> when I was in uh, elementary school. I love watching wrestling, and I wanted to have big and strong muscles just like them. So it was at this point in fourth grade in elementary school where I put together my first workout program. Fast forward, that's my mother and I celebrating. Got my degree in exercise, and it was just a continuation of my passion to want to be in fitness. Uh, this was uh, back in 2006. Uh, I started a fitness boot camp here at the Trinity Park in Fort Worth. It became, within a year, one of the largest fitness boot camps in the United States. Uh, that was really a great opportunity for me to just learn more about the fitness industry and trends and get a better handle on what I wanted to do for my passion. In 2014, I transitioned out of being in the fitness boot camp and I started doing a one on one private training. I just really wanted to provide the community with something that could give them more lasting results, something that was going to be more impactful in their lives. This is actually one of my longest running clients. She's now been with me for 16 years, and I kid you not, she's in better shape today than she was when she first started. Uh, my wife, man, another one, another one, okay. Ah, okay, okay. Give it a gift, stay strong, right, I'm a trainer. So uh, my wife and I, we started Champion back in 2021, and uh, man, that was a big moment as well. Uh, really uh, gave me a chance to branch out and start my own system. So that being said, what makes Champion different 
is that we offer preferred scheduling to our clients. As you see on the top left, we really make it a point. We train the busy client who's very limited on time and has really more resources than time, so we give them a schedule that works for them. Uh, also, uh, we have a customized nutritional plan, not a diet, so this helps our clients to have something that's scientific, realistic, and sustainable. Uh, there's an app that I developed back in 2021, which makes it easier for our clients to understand what to do. And then the customized training, that's one of my awesome trainers, Timmy, who's now been with me for two years. Oh, that's big as well, because he's been so helpful in allowing us to help more people. And here are just a lot of transformations, starting with myself. I firmly believe you have to be your own walking business card. So thank you for your time. And uh, I'd like to thank the city of, Fro uh, city of Fort Worth and Frost Bank for putting on this event. It's really been great. Thank you. What an impressive business. I want to hear more about the future of your business. Thank you. Uh, great question. So uh, we started off with eight clients when Champion started in 2021. Uh, in less than two years, that's now turned into 45 clients in our program. So we are clearly growing at a rapid pace. Uh, we've more than tripled our revenue since 2021. And there's an appropriate ratio of client to trainer. And we are actually at max capacity uh, having two trainers and having over 40 clients. It's a 1 to 15 ratio optimally. So now we need to bring on another qualified trainer to help take us to the next level. And again, great job. Um, What's your target kind of demographic? And do you have a specific area of the city or are you kind of Metroplex wide? Yes, Dante, great question. Um, our target client typically is the client who is more fluent, uh, that is the high profile professional. That's not all we work with, that's just usually is who we tend to attract. And uh, we're looking to expand as far as to buy out other gyms who are looking to adopt a new type of uh, program who have a similar clientele base in a gym that we can uh, inject our system so we can try to uh, turn it into more of a champion type model. I think you pointed out that we all have a gym membership and there's a gym on every single corner. What makes you special? Uh, what, what makes us special is that champion has a 95% retention rate. So as I mentioned from the client that you just saw, the average client stays in our program for 18 months or longer and not to mention the fact that most people don't use their gym memberships. I could have easily asked how many of you are going on a regular basis. But in our program, we actually have a 100% show rate, which goes back to uh, the, the calendar and the scheduling. So that's what allows us to be able to keep our clients in our program longer, and they see the value in it, and they get more results. Okay, thank you so much. Strong foundation right there, and he definitely called me out. I think I had a membership for over a year, never went. I'd probably go if I could hang out with him. So let's go ahead and queue up our next contestant here. The business that we are putting on the spot is On the Spot Solutions. So go ahead and welcome them with a round of applause. That happened to me in my first real job. The perpetually dirty workplace, not the long hours, not the demanding clients, turned my dream job into a nightmare. Studies show that a dirty workplace can reduce productivity by up to 40%. That reality led me to start this business. I'm Johnny Anderson. And together we're the driving force behind On The Spot Solutions, the go-to cleaning company for busy business owners. We understand the importance of a clean workplace for business success. That's why we offer basic and deep cleaning services designed to boost employee productivity and free up free time for busy business owners to focus on growth. The increased focus on cleanliness due to COVID-19 fueled a boom for the commercial cleaning industry. And On The Spot Solutions is here to meet that demand. 
We specialize in small to medium scale businesses with 50 or fewer employees. As a veteran, I know the value of efficiency, precision, and getting the job done right the first time. These three principles, along with our value added services, set us apart from our competitors. Since graduating from an accelerator program in January, we have just secured our third long-term contract. We aim to close six total sales this year and reach $47,000 in revenue. We are looking for a investment of $47,000. We have done what we could to bring on the spot solutions to where it is today. But now we need your help. We are seeking a $10,000 investment to propel us to the next level. Winning the Fort Worth Business Plan competition would allow us to invest in a company vehicle, hire a new employee, purchase better supplies and equipment, and develop our apprenticeship program. So if you are a busy business owner, don't let a dirty workplace steal your success. Get your quote today and let On The Spot Solutions boost your employees' productivity. Thank you. Great presentation. I, I love how you included a use of funds for your winnings. Thank you. So good job. How would you use the $40,000? How will we use $40,000? I, I heard you say that you were looking for an investment of $40,000, correct? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I meant $10,000. Got it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Approved. Again, excellent job. What does your current workforce look like? How do, what's your staffing currently? Right now, we have a staff of three. Okay. And with the 10000 you guys are looking to add how many more? Um. With the, our capacity is four uh, jobs right now with the staff that we have. Adding another job would uh, require us to need another employee. You talked about securing a, a brand new contract recently. What are you doing to expand the network of folks that, that know you and are working with you? Our marketing strategy relies primarily on networking, uh, referrals, social media marketing, and content marketing. Another question. So, my, so in construction, have you guys looked at construction cleaning, or is it just currently uh, operating businesses? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. Have you guys looked at construction cleaning as well as? We, uh, we have. We've considered that, but we just haven't moved forward with it yet. Um, I know that we have, with our cleaning company, often run into um, the lack of sustainability with hourly wage workers. How will you manage that problem? Um, right now, we uh, have a staffing agency that we uh, ha are in partnership with, and they take care of all the requirements. They provide the workers, and we pay them. Thank you. That's our time. Thank you. That was spot on, wouldn't you say? You know, when I first met Johnny, go ahead and I'm gonna enjoy a drink upstairs, thank you. <laughs> when I first met Johnny, he had this bow tie on and that stuck with me, I've never forgotten it. And he had this charisma and this spotless energy of his brand that ran through and through. So I'm really excited now that we're feeling ripe, wouldn't you say, to bring on our next pitch, Ripe Publishing House. A round of applause, please. How many of you like a good story? All right, I'm gonna take you on a story time. Me and my brother, two authors that came together to start a publishing company. Why? Well, because of numbers like these. 90% of publishers reject manuscripts. 80% of individuals wanna write a book and 5% take action. 
I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like a ripe opportunity. And so we did just that. We started Right Publishing House. And let me just tell you, we are booming. So much so that we had to pause, look at our processes and procedures. And then I made a phone call to my homegirl and said, yo, we really need your help. And I was so excited to take that phone call because this is my area of expertise from corporate America. So we dug into the business model, and here's where we landed. Positive, Positive publishing, practical, practical printing, and, and purposeful, purposeful programs. programs. Let's dig into them one at a time. So positive publishing, what we've done, we've increased our clients from two to 15 last year. And we've also increased our visibility. With our first published book, Words Are Magic, receiving awards and landing in two major retailers. But that's not all. We've also got exciting press and partnerships. Now, I know you're probably thinking, okay, well, how do you stand out? I'm glad you asked. We stand out by having no royalties. Our competitors, by the way, have up to 40%. Additionally, let's talk growth. So far, we've had zero paid advertising. So we're simply going to turn on the paid advertising. T, give them the next leg. So practical printing is pretty simple. As you can see, our costs for printing books are typically lower than our competitors. And even with that, our margins are strong. How we're going to grow this arm of the business, first and foremost, we have to let people know that we print more than just books. So local businesses out there, see us after if you need some printing, right? Now on to the soul of our business, which is our purposeful programs. This is where we aim to increase literacy and confidence in Fort Worth youth. And our signature program is the Young Writers Lab, where our children learn how to become published authors. By the end of it, they have a published book on walmart.com. We have some in the audience. If you could stand, give them a round of applause. <laughs> How we plan to grow this particular arm of the business, we're gonna reach into those grants and we're gonna have a virtual class. So as you can see, we're ripe for advancement, ripe for opportunities, and ripe for impact. So this is not the end. We're, we're just, just getting, getting started. started. What a wonderful company. Very, very exciting presentation. So can you tell me the vision that you have for your business? What your end goal? Yes, the end goal. Very good question. So our end goal, as you notice, we have positive publishing. We are all about impact. So we only want to put positive stories out in the world. As you can see with our programs, we don't want to just pay our authors come pay us to publish our books. We want to teach young children that this is a path for them for entrepreneurship as well. So that's really where our target is. Uh, great presentation. Um, I remember you from last year. Loved it as well. Um, you talked about most publishing houses take 40%. You're not going to take anything. Mm -hmm. Why not even have a nominal royalty? Yes, very good question. Um, if we've had a long time, we told you a little bit more. But we have, uh, we actually distribute the books as well. So not only do we go through the author process, but we ship them out. So we charge a recurring fee. So that's how we get some recurring income there because we ship. And we also host author pages that we charge our people. So we get money other ways, but we don't gouge with the royalties. Yep. No, excellent. And great job again, ladies. Um, Y'all stand out, right? I think in, in this not just the competition, but kind of in this market. So how do you influence and promote partnerships to kind of help people, and I'm going to say black young girls, stand out in that same way with the books that they write? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think that it's just about getting the word out. Like, people don't know that we exist right now because we've been kind of in the cave getting our processes together, getting things tight. Now we're gonna start marketing, start advertising, getting our name out there. So like I said, that so kids can know that this is an option. And really quick, we have started forming partnerships with the city of Fort Worth, as well as Fort Worth ISD, yes. Mountain Signal ISD, as well as even conversations with Tarrant County College mm -hmm. in regards to the Young Writers Lab. So yes. we out here, we just, we getting there. We getting there. Thank you. You know, I feel like they have quite the dream here to be able to say no to clients, to have recurring income. I mean, now I know who to call not only for my first book, but for business advice because there's something going on over there. So now, 
we need to buckle up because our next pitch is filling a gap in the market and I think you'll find it quite interesting. So please bring on Lucas with Shaman Systems. Good evening, I'm Lucas Schulte, founder and lead engineer of Shaman Systems, doing business as Vector Advanced. And at Vector Advanced, I design and produce power electronics and parts for personal electric vehicles, or PEVs. So what are those? I rode in on one. You've probably seen them on the street too. E-bikes, e-scooters, anything to do with micromobility, any kind of single person electric vehicle. And this market sits at about $180 billion right now, growing to about $440 billion in 2030. So what's the issue? Well, you have a very fast growing market for these kinds of things. We're just not an auto zone. There is nowhere for someone to go just to get parts when they break or when they want to upgrade them. So with this rising industry, you have a rising industry of small businesses as well doing uh, repair and servicing, and they need parts. And that's where Vector Advance comes in. So in the anatomy of a PVD, you have things like the battery, the motor, some bells and whistles, and electronics. But at the heart of it all is a speed controller, or the motor controller, or ESC, various names for it. But it is the most complex thing about it. It's also the thing that breaks the most. It's also the things that people want to upgrade the most when they want to do that. So that's what Vector Advance specializes in, the motor controller. These. I have various models, depending on what you want to do. I have an OEM relationship with an electric dirt bike company out of California where I make the little bit. The one in the middle is a part that's used in these things. Kind of a catch-all for any kind of PEV up to about 40 miles per hour to include the balance stuff. And then the Solo. That's for electric race skateboards. These things that go that 50 miles per hour and higher. And when it comes to success so far, 240K revenue last year, 85K profit. I currently work with six other businesses to include my distributors. I do not really do my own marketing or sales outside of these close relationships. My distributors are a lot better at the marketing side than I am. And when it comes to a growth plan, 500K revenue in one to two years, a million in five to 10, but that's not happening unless production, output, quality, and staffing is squared away. A little bit of show and tell for the judges. To kind of give you a little bit better understanding of it is what, did I, what I do, what I make, you can pass that around. Thank you so much, that's our time. Yep. Good job being creative and uh, showing that a, a very technical company can be fun. And um, I'm glad that I saw your presentation because it made me understand your business better. Um, I, and it's true, there is a problem out there that you're trying to solve. So how do you get to the business owners or the uh, c consumer that needs your product? So the way I get to that consumer originally was through specialized online forums. People who were needing new parts and were on these hobbyist forums. Uh, but that eventually grew into full distribution, where I wasn't really equipped to handle it, but there were people doing that in the PEV market already. They reached out to me because they wanted my parts, because they worked well. And there was really good bang for buck for what they do. Now, me being more of the engineer, kind of the nerd, I don't really do the marketing stuff, but they were really good at that part. So I just handed him my parts, and they kind of took care of the rest. Which means you rely on them to do the marketing for, for you, right? So have you ever thought about acquiring your own marketing so you can write your own story and maybe grow instead of one mil, but maybe 10 mil, 100 mil in the next five to 10 years? 
100 mil in the next 10 years might be pretty ambitious. There's a lot of things that go into the underside of this that are really challenging. Production is one. And finding a factory and means of production to produce that much is really hard to do. Uh, during COVID, it, it kind of rocked my world because of the whole chip shortage. I couldn't have things manufactured, much less Ford. So you're faced with those kind of challenges, even now, to do that reliably for something like a hundred million dollar company. So that's something that takes time to establish and find a facility that is capable of that and still maintain quality. Really quickly, because I feel like I'm running out of time. Um, thank you for making the adjust. Ah, dang it. Can I ask my question? I am sorry. Just to keep it fair, we will have to end there. I appreciate it. We can always ask in the intermission. <laughs> Okay, we have two more. I appreciate everyone for enjoying this tonight. So speaking of riding off into the sunset like that, I know all we all love a good road trip snack and our next pitch is sure to make you hungry. So I hope you already ate dinner because our next contestant that we're bringing on up is Smackin' Mac. All in all, cheese chasers and Mac Mavens, it's time to meet Smack and Mac. This food trailer gives Fort Worth a reason to cheer for my legendary baked mac and cheese dish that's more than just good, it's great. Delight in the delectable dance of the buffalo chicken mac with a bold blue cheese drizzle or indulge in our most famous dish, the bangin' Texas barbecue mac. Okay, um, oh sorry, oh. melt into the mac and cheese patty melt, a twist sure to turn your idea of a sandwich inside out in the best way possible. From food festivals to catering and seasonal contracts with Six Flags over Texas and AT&T Stadium, Smack and Mac caters creamy comfort for any occasion. A cheese champion winning awards for the winning awards at the North Texas Food Truck Challenge and the Mac Attack. Driven to thrive, being a single mom of three, my many motivators helped me position my business to maintain revenue over six figures. Smack and Mac is ready to expand with a drive through for your late night food cravings and concession, and concession locations inside your favorite venue, and even some Mac on the move inside DFW Airport. Elevate your snacking situation to a symphony of cheesy zest. Smack and Mac's got your back. Don't set your sights on simple when you can have the ultimate cheesy treat. Thank you, and after all, happiness is just a Mac moment away, and I'm just a girl who loves Mac and cheese. Please follow me, and I look forward to serving you soon. I was hoping for samples. <laughs> No, um, talk a little bit about, more about, you talked about the airport and some concessions. Can you talk a little bit more about what your plans are there and what you need to accomplish that? Okay, yes. So for, to open up in um, DFW Airport, um, I just have to work on getting a couple of certifications that are necessary to get moving forward into the next step. Uh, that's basically where I'm at right now, just getting the uh, two certifications that are needed to move forward. And then um, they're opening up Terminal F, so that's the goal, is to try and um, get a location inside their new terminal. You mentioned that you do pop-ups and you have seasonal contracts. How many kind of operations do you have going at one time? And then how do you maintain quality across all of those? Yes, so I have right now a really good team so that's how I'm able to operate in different locations. So I'm able to do uh, set up where I set up equipment inside of 
Six Flags or um, in type of any type of venue, and that's equipment that's um, already that I already had using a tent setup. So I move in there, and then just making sure that my team is very well versed on how to interact with customers about the product, the ingredients, and how to make the product. So that's how we get there. How many will you have going at one time? So it costs a lot of capital to be able to open your own store and also inside DFW. Have you been set up for that? Do you have a lender that you work with? Yes. So one of the options that I um, may consider is subcontracting into the airport. And that's when you actually partner with a, a business that has a little more uh, leverage when it comes to the financing. And they help you get in with a subcontract. Thank you. That is our time. Thank you. All right, so I hope you've been taking notes because we only have one pitch left and soon you'll be able to vote for your favorite. When I pitched, I actually didn't have anyone in the audience to vote for me. My husband was at work, so I was here all alone. Um, so if you have someone that you're here for, please remember to vote for them. And if you're not here for anyone, pick your favorite. All right, so we have one left. And you know what? My first hire was a virtual assistant and our last pitch is all about, about that. So we are going to welcome up Style Smart VA. Have you ever wanted to hire a hairstylist or a plumber and you couldn't get a hold of them, so you had to hire someone else? This frustration causes thousands of dollars to service providers every year. Hello, my name is Shauna Murphy. I am a hairstylist and the founder of Style Smart VA. Imagine that you are a hairstylist like me and your brain is fried, your back aches, and you have been a ther therapist, a chemist, all while doing hair, and you are even here on stage tonight and you're faced with a backlog of client communications that if you miss even one of those can mean lost revenue for your business. This is my reality as a solo entrepreneur, but it is not only faced by me. It is faced by hairstylists, plumbers, and mechanics. Traditional front desk solutions are often unaffordable and ineffective. And that is why we have started Style Smart Virtual Assistants. Our virtual assistants connect with, beauty, with entrepreneurs and we help reduce missed revenue by handling client communications. Our virtual assistants meticulously handle appointment bookings, ensuring revenue of acquisition of new clients and retention of old clients. In the beauty industry, if you miss just one client, that can cost you up to $1,600 a year in lost revenue per client. So ensuring meticulous, th thorough follow through with your virtual assistants, you are able to reduce missed appointment opportunities for your business. And we can translate this revenue into other business opportunities. So our focus on our beauty industry, we have built out the infrastructure for Style Smart VA, including software that connects virtual assistants to entrepreneurs. Our software creates an online marketplace where entrepreneurs are able to connect with virtual assistants. And our virtual assistants go through our training where they are able um, to create a profile like this and on, entrepreneurs are able to sort through them and find the virtual assistant that is right for their needs. We have discovered the need for this beyond the beauty industry. And so we are looking to license our proprietary software to other industries with our business infrastructure. Our virtual assistants are dedicated and they go through industry trainings. They are US based and they are dedicated. So we are, um, let me move forward, sorry. So quarter over quarter, we have seen 40 to 50% growth within our business with a client lifetime value of about $4,900. Um, and we are looking to license into other and new industries. Um, 
Thank you so much for your time. Oh, the Q&A, sorry. So I myself have a virtual assistant mm -hmm. and she's based in the Philippines. Yes. And I guess because of that, we don't have to pay a ton of money for mm -hmm. her. But you said your virtual assistant is based in the United States. So how can you afford them and how can your client afford them? So we do have virtual assistants that are U.S. based, but they are also based um, in Mexico and Central America. Um, so it just depends on what your virtual assistant needs. Are they entry level? Um, then they're a little bit more affordable. But then if you're looking for something like strategic marketing, um, like building out websites, that's gonna cost a little bit more. And so you're gonna be able to filter through our virtual assistants, their price points and what they do to hire the right virtual assistant for your business. What does your profit margin look like with being able to pay people mm -hmm. and also, you know. So we pay our virtual assistants 70% of what we like charge the client. And then we are, it's a very low overhead. Um, so our profit margins are about 20%. What, what's your target demographic area? Um, so we actually are all over the United States. So we, our target market is solo entrepreneurs and small business owners who maybe can't afford a traditional front desk. What hurdles have you seen with being national and kind of being stationed here in the Metroplex? Um, we really haven't seen too many hurdles. Uh, I think it's really just about finding where your niche is within the market. The beauty industry is a massive market. And so we have found that um, creating strategic partnerships has allowed us to grow. So I'm uh, real interested in your training program. So talk mm -hmm. to me about what that looks like and how would it change depending on the industry? Um, okay, so our, I developed our, our like training program, and so it just it varies based off of the role and the position that you need hired. So for a front desk staff, they need to learn how to understand like the way you book, how you answer the phone, the way that you handle clients' interactions versus something else where it's more intricate and you have to learn a little bit more detailed tasks. Thank you so much. That's our time. that is a business with deep roots and a plan that can save us all some time. Like, where was that four years ago when I was like a little bit too busy? Okay, so before we take a break, I do want to invite Robert Stearns up for a couple of remarks, and then we will remind you to vote. So we're getting that open. Robert? Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm going to make this really quick. Uh, this competition really takes a lot of work and a lot of planning, and so I want to take a minute just to recognize my economic development team. Can you all please stand up, raise your hands, those that are here that have been volunteering. And then I also want to take, where did Kristen go? There she is. I want to take a special moment to have Kristen Martinez uh, with Frost Bank, who has been uh, you know, kind of our tireless champion for this program. All right, thank you. And one final recognition. Uh, we also have joining us tonight Councilmember Michael Crane. Uh, Councilmember Crane is not only an entrepreneur himself, uh, but he chairs our Entrepreneurship and Innovation Committee, and so he is also a tireless advocate for building small business and entrepreneurship across the community. So thank you, Councilmember Crane. All right, well, I'm gonna turn it back over to Lauren. We've got some judging to do. I don't envy you all, so have fun back there judging, and uh, we will move on with the competition. Okay, so now it's time for a break. We could go enjoy some tasty snacks out in the lobby. We will invite you back in about 15 minutes while the judges deliberate. So go ahead and head out and don't forget to vote. Thank you so much. Okay, so welcome back and congratulations again to the top eight for making it this far. And thank you for coming. We appreciate your patience, and I think it just makes us even more on the edge of our seats. Um, before I continue, I did want to recognize Council Member Chris Nettles, who is here. If you could just give a round of applause. Okay, let's carry on. Here's how this is going to work. If your name is announced for any of the prizes, please come 
get your trophy and move to the far side of the stage next to the banner. And then immediately after we have announced the grand prize, we just ask that all winners, judges, and sponsors please return to the stage for additional group photos. So we're going to start with the perfect pitch prize sponsored by Printed Threads, who would like to say a few words. So if I could have Brett come on stage here. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Brett, and I am an entrepreneur. Um, I, I showed up today, and I looked out and saw a bunch of people wearing suits, and I felt really dressed down, and then I realized those are bankers. So, um, <laughs> 14 years ago, I started a small business called Printed Threads uh, with my wife in our garage, and uh, it's, it's been a really interesting long road, and I, I think... Um, coming to this competition, I came last year for the first time and seeing like this is so cool. The city of Fort Worth does such cool things. I wish that I could have been a part of something like this 14 years ago. So thank you so much to Frostbank. Thank you so much to Robert Stearns and his whole team for creating this. this is amazing. I loved hearing like everybody talk and, uh, and talk about their dreams and, and, and working on making those dreams come true. So standing on this, this stage is like, I think, a really big deal and a really hard thing to do. So being an entrepreneur is an extremely hard path, but it is also super rewarding, and I'm so glad that I took that path for myself and my family. Um, I've, I have such a uh, soft, spart, soft spart, spot in my heart. Um, yes, that's a spart. And uh, for, for entrepreneurs, and I want to do everything that I possibly can to help other entrepreneurs that are starting out on their journey. I've done crazy things like uh, be sued and be deposed, and I don't want any other people to have to go through that if they don't have to. Uh, and so anything that I can do to help, uh, I'm here to do. But uh, in the meantime, what I can do right now is give away a $500 gift certificate to Printed Threads. So what we do... What we do is we uh, do a lot of screen printing and a lot of embroidery and, and a lot of high fashion stuff. So uh, the, the products that you get as a young entrepreneur or a small business or a, a family, uh, what do you call that when the families get together? Reunion. Uh, those same products are, the, are made with the same heart, soul, and feel that we make products for the Dallas Mavericks and other really big organizations. And so we want to help, uh, help you guys as best as we can. So... Uh, good luck, and I uh, hope to see you real soon. Okay, so then we are going to announce that perfect pitch prize, meaning the person that you all voted for tonight. So our winner of the perfect pitch, that $500 credit, is Ripe Publishing. Please, thank you. Congratulations, this is so exciting. All right, so now to the main event. First, with the third prize for $4,000. What kind of a third prize is this? All right, I've got a list right here. Our third place winner is Champion Strength and Conditioning. And I think he'll probably recognize a few new clients from this crowd, right? We're all feeling motivated, ready to go work out. Oh, so exciting here. Okay, now for our second prize winner. That is for a total of $6,000. This is cash. Our winner for second place tonight, Style Smart VA. Perfect. Okay, so this is what we've all been waiting for, and we really appreciate your patience. The grand prize winner for a beautiful check of $10,000. The one, the only, Ripe Publishing. <laughs> It's always an interesting turn of events, right? To already be on stage for that beautiful printed threads credit and then to then receive this. So we have this beautiful check here we'd like to award. 
Can we get a round of applause? Look at this. Thank you again for your patience, your support, your applause, your anticipation here. We appreciate everyone who has mentored, sponsored, and attended. On behalf of Frost Bank in the city of Fort Worth, thank you, and we will see you next year.